This week on Sports Science. We discuss velocity, acceleration, gravity, and Newton's laws in sports. We will be interviewing some elite athletes, going in-depth to some of your favorite sports, and helping you learn something about the science that is physics. I'm your host, Cameron Keeman. Get it off! Yeah! Oh no, you had it! And this is Sports Science. The first topic we will be covering is velocity. Velocity is defined as the speed of an item in a given direction. To find velocity, you simply divide displacement by time. Here to give us more insight on velocity, here is Dawson Boyd's starting pitcher, Daniel Baldwin. I can throw a lot of pitches, but my fastest is about 70 miles per hour. This means it only takes about 0.59 seconds for it to cross the 60 and a half feet distance between home plate and mound. When I'm batting, I have to react to the pitch rather quickly. One time, I hit the ball 300 feet in 2.27 seconds. What was the average velocity of the ball traveling at? We know that velocity equals displacement over time. All we have to do is take 300 feet, our displacement, and divide it by 2.27 seconds, our time. We divide 300 by 2.27 and we get our answer of 132.2 feet per second south. Thanks Dan, I hope the baseball team can do just as good as last year. The next aspect we'll feature is acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change in the speed of an object. The formula for acceleration in is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by an amount of time. To show some acceleration, we're going to have Easton here. Run some 40 yard dashes. To accelerate while I was running, I pumped my arms and tilted forward. This gives me momentum and reduces air friction. While I was running, I initially accelerated but then as I reached the latter half of my run, I started to decelerate. If you look at my speeds, you can see that I accelerated between my first and second 10 yards. To find my acceleration, we can take 10 yards divided by 1.6 seconds, my first 10 yards. This equals 6.25 yards per second, my initial velocity. Then we take 1.3 seconds, my second time, and divide by 10 yards and get 7.7 .7 yards per second, my final velocity. We can then use the acceleration formula and insert 7.7 .7 for f and 6.3 for i. You can subtract these units and get 1.4 yards per second. We finally divide this by 1.3 seconds and we get the answer. I was accelerating at 1.1 yards per second squared. Thanks for boring and reviewer, Easton. Now the next topic we'll cover is gravity. Gravity is defined as the force that attracts a body towards the center of the earth. The formula for gravity is f equals mg or mass times gravity equals force. With the help from Pete Ruby Samilia, who is going to show you some simple principles of gravity. In this picture, Pete Rubish is holding up a 795 pound deadlift. Gravity is trying to push the bar down, but Pete is using the same amount of force to keep the bar steady. Because we know that F equals mg, all we have to do is insert our numbers. 795 pounds is equal to 360 kilograms and the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, we find that the answer comes out to be 3,528 newtons. That's a lot of force. Another principle of gravity is that all objects in free fall acceleration at negative 9.8 meters per second squared, regardless of mass. To show this principle, Cameron is holding a 61 kilogram deadlift, whereas Easton is holding a 101 kilogram deadlift. 
When the bars dropped, however, both of the weights hit the ground at nearly the exact same time. Gravity sure is quantifiable. Remember, gravity isn't just a rule, it's the law. Now, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Mark Bell here, supertraining.tv. I'm here to talk to you guys about the slingshot. It can help you on your bench and stuff, but it's a lot more fun to just play with it. For example, let's take a look at this. We got Silent Mike here. Supplying the ammunition. We're going to show you how fun it can be to play with the uh, slingshot. You might spend. Nice catch, Silent Mike. To get your very own slingshot for $29.99, call 651-4888-888. I'm Mark Bell from Super Training Gym, and this is The Slingshot. Now back to the show with Newton's First Law. Newton's First Law states that an object in motion will stay in motion until acted upon by an outside force. Also, an object at rest will stay at rest until acted upon as well. The amount of force applied to the object is found with the formula F equals MA. To further discuss this law, we're going to head down to the Dawson Boyd Community Center. Let's kick it. We are here in the Dawson Boyd Community Center to show you Newton's first law of motion. A common term associated with Newton's first law is inertia. We're going to have Easton kick some footballs to show you this baffling law of motion. As you can see, the ball is currently not moving. Easton then accelerates towards the ball and strikes it with his foot. The energy he generated with his leg is transferred into the ball and the state of inertia the ball was in is broken. Inertia can also be applied to objects in motion. An object in motion won't stop until another force is acted upon it, and inertia is broken. The same rule can be applied to the kick as well. The ball will keep moving through the air until it is caught, either caught or air resistance causes the ball to fall to the ground. In this case, Spencer was there to stop the ball. It went from moving to stopping real quick. Hey, good job, fellas. Now we'll move on to Law 2. Newton's second law of motion states that the force is dependent upon the mass and rate of acceleration of an object. The amount of force is equal to the mass of an object times the rate of acceleration of an object. To exemplify the components of Newton's second law, we'll head down to the weight room and do two some cleans. See you there. With the formula F equals MA, Increased mass will equal less acceleration, and increased acceleration will equal less mass. You can see this principle on my first clean with 31 kilos. Because the mass is relatively low, the weight accelerates upwards very quickly. When I increase the weight to 52 kilos, though, the weight accelerates much slower upwards because of the increased mass. When the force is increased, either the acceleration, mass, or both have to increase. In this case, Spencer is able to produce more force, so the same mass of 52 kilograms accelerates upwards faster than it did for me. This cleaning party shows that for every change in acceleration, there is a resulting change in force, math, mass, or both. Also, every change in force results in a change in mass or acceleration. Now that I got my lift in, we can discuss Newton's third law. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The formula for this law is F1 equals a negative F2, or force equals negative force 2. This law can be seen in almost any sport, but for this, we're going to use the best sport, golf. Now, let's head to the gorge and see how the third motion is put into action. Newton's third law of motion can be seen every time you hit a golf ball. For example, watch this. The club is going about 100 miles per hour, and this energy is transferred into the ball equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. The ball, though, doesn't travel 100 miles per hour because of the club and the shape and material of the ball. These factors result in a ball speed of about 150 miles per hour. Putting, although much slower, uses these same principles. The putter head moves about 25 miles per hour and contacts the ball. The ball comes off the face at about 35 miles per hour and rolled rolls toward the hole. 
the energy the ball has while rolling is being transferred into the factors that are slowing it down, such as the friction on the grass. This is the reason that the ball rolls faster and, and longer on shorter grass. Slower energy transfer to the grass means that the ball maintains more energy and hopefully settles in the bottom of the cup. Talk about a hole in one. Hey everyone, I'm your guest host, Tashanity Tanner Jackson. I hope you won't forget that. Anyways, that's all the time we have for today's show. Talk to you later. That's it. That's the video for the day. As always, thanks for watching. In the meantime, stay big. Buddy, what does it say? Subscribe to the channel.